Hello YouTube viewers, Sree Tips here. Welcome to my channel. Today what I'm going to attempt to do is make a silicon mold impression of one of my chest pieces here. And uh, I've got some uh, silicon molding compound here with a curing agent. I've got some mold release agent here you spray on the piece so that the uh, when you go to take the uh, mold apart from the piece it comes right off. I've got a uh, wax injector here that I bought on eBay and it, what it does is I've got some wax here. We put the wax in here, plug it in, heat it up, and you pull this plunger up and you push it down and it injects the wax into the silicon mold so we can make a wax impression of one of our chest pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start that for you right now. First thing I'm going to do is I've got a uh, I bought some golf tees here. I think they were about three bucks for 90 of them. They're just plain wood. I cut one in half. I cut the stem off of one, and I got this part here. And what I'm going to do is I got a drill bit that exactly matches the size of this thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wooden chest piece here and line it up on the bottom and carefully drill a hole into the bottom of the chest piece. Now what I'll do is take the golf tee and push it up into that hole. Should just fit right in there nice and snug because it's like an interference fit. Just like that. I bought these hot cups from the Dollar General. And the reason I bought them is because they've got a little bit stiffer material out here to uh, help support the mold. And uh, the next step is is to cut a uh, a little base out of some cardboard here with a uh, with a knife. Now what I'll do is with my hot glue gun over here, I'm gonna apply a drop of glue here, glue him on and then uh, put the cup on and run a bead of glue around it to glue the cup to the base. Now using a sharp razor blade I'm going to trim the top off the cup. And here's our finished pattern. The queen's uh, glued in down here inside the cup. I've got it sealed up nicely so I can pour some silicone in there. To determine how much of this uh, mold compound, the silicone rubber stuff, that I'm going to need for my uh, mold here, I took a, a, one of the coffee cups, filled it up with water, and then dumped it into my uh, container here. And so I'm going to use that to judge how much uh, silicon base that I need to add to this container. It's a two-part base. It's got the base and it's got the uh, curing agent. And you got to mix them together at a ratio of 1 to 10. I've got some of the uh, base poured into this container here. I'm going to add a little bit more to it now to uh, get the right level. I'm going to put my uh, pattern in here, 
and I'm going to dump the uh, silicone in. I just realized I didn't add any mold release to it, but that's okay. We're going to just go ahead and go with it. I got a can of mold release in there. I should have put that in here. Now I'm going to cover my chamber here, seal it up. up to 25 inches and that should uh, that should take all the bubbles out of that the reason I'm doing that is to draw all the air out of out of the uh, molding compound the silicon so we don't have any air bubbles in there Okay, it's been uh, it's up above 25 inches of vacuum there. It took about two and a half minutes to get there. I'm just going to go ahead and shut the uh, vacuum pump off now and just let this bleed off naturally. Before I started, I made a prototype just to go through it to get the hang of it before I actually started videoing, and I realized I've got enough... Uh, I've got enough silicon left to go ahead and and do this one too. This one I did spray with a little bit of uh, mold release agent, like so. And then I'm gonna mix this up now, and then we'll. Uh, I got to move quickly now because I don't know how long it takes for this stuff to set up. And try to get the other one in here and get it degassed also. So then I'll have two done. I'll have a king and a queen done. See how this looks inside here. Oh, <laughs> disaster! It's, okay, as you can see, it uh, pulled all the uh, silicon material out of the out of the form uh, the form that I had made there for the piece. I'm just going to go ahead and add this to it, and we're going to try to degas it again. And uh, this time, I'm not going to put that much vacuum on it. Okay, we'll try this again. This time I'm going to turn my uh, turn my limiting switch on, my vacuum switch, and only bring it up to about seven inches. See if we can just suck the air out that way. I left the vacuum cycling on this uh, mold creation that I'm trying to uh, make happen here. And now what we're going to do is open this up and see what we got.
Well, here's our silicon mold. It's set up. It's firm and uh, set. Let me see if I can get it out of this paint pot now. It's stuck in there pretty good. And there we go. There's our mold. Okay, now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to attempt to cut the chest piece out of the mold here with this X-Acto knife. Making a zigzag cut as I go is what I was told. Now that I've got the, uh, the queen back out, I'm going to poke a hole in the top here until I hit the cavity. It's about this far in, so i got to kind of poke it all the way down in there. And hopefully that will create a vent for the, uh, when I go to shoot the wax in there, it's got a place to uh, vent the air out when I do that. This is wax. And what I'm going to do now is put it in this little wax injector that I got here. I'm going to dump a little bit into the, to the well here. And then what we're going to do is plug this in and heat the wax up. I'll turn it up to high and get the wax to melt. And then what I'm going to do is put the mold back into one of these cups to hold it together. I'm going to fit it over this little nipple right here pull this plunger out and inject wax into that cavity that I just created inside this silicone material. Okay, the wax pot is, uh, the wax is all molten now down in there. It's on medium setting and if you watch, I'm going to pull this plunger up and you see the wax coming up out of there? Out of that little uh, nozzle there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to uh, fill this cavity in here that I made of the queen with wax. I've cut a vent hole in the top of the mold. I've cut a little vent hole in the top of the cup here. I'll stick it back in, the, in one of the cups so it holds together. And then I'm going to try to go ahead and do this right now. I'm going to put that little cavity or that uh, nozzle in that hole right there. Hold it down firmly. I'm going to pull up on the plunger. Oops. Pulled it right on out of there. And we're going to go ahead and try to inject some wax. We're doing it right now. This hole lay a little bit bigger so I can see down in there. And I don't see no wax coming out of the vent tube. So I don't think any wax got up in there on this this time around. We'll pull it off and just let it cool down now. If you notice, you can see a little pool of wax there where the inlet was to this thing. Let's let that cool down now. Going to have a look inside the mold here of my uh, first attempt at making a uh, a wax replica of the queen. Now cut this off. There she is in there. 
it's not right, but it's uh, it's getting close to what I'm after. All right. I don't know if you can see that. It didn't come out just right. I didn't get enough wax in there, but it's uh, an exact replica of the queen. So now I'm going to cut a bigger vent hole and see if we can get that wax to go up in there a little bit better. And do this again. I'm just going to add this right back to the wax pot over here and remelt it. And give it another shot. Okay, the wax is heated up and ready to inject. We're going to try our second attempt at injecting wax into the mold now. Alrighty, here we go. Second attempt. I'm going to put the mold back up into the uh, to one of these cups. Hold it in there nice and firm. Got to cut a little hole away up here to let the air out of there. And then I'm just going to put it down over the nozzle, and I'm going to inject the wax. This time I'm going to inject it. I got it on high this time, and I'm going to go ahead and inject it firmly. See if I can get the shoot all the way up in there all at once. Here we go. I hope, hope it doesn't come spilling back out of there. But here we go. Ah. All right. Got a little bit of pool of wax there. Just gonna let this thing set up for about a half an hour now. And now to have a look at my second attempt at casting a wax figure of my first chess piece. Let's see how this thing came out. Well, this one looks much better. It does have some porosity in the bottom there. That one came out pretty good. It's got a little bit of flashing here. Oh, well, the top didn't quite uh, get all the wax in there that I needed, but uh, it's getting better. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I might pour this one back in and uh, and try it again. Or I might be able to use this. I don't know. I think it's right there. It's coming apart. It's loose. But uh, that's the idea. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this back in the... Uh, Wax injector there, remelt it and try it again. Keep going until I get a nice solid piece and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, I injected the mold a third time. And what I've been doing here is uh, with a disposable pipette, uh, refilling the mold. It kind of sinks down in there as it's cooling and I think that's what was causing my cavity earlier in the base of the piece that I was trying to cast and as this sinks down in what I do is I draw a little bit of wax up with a pipette and just drip it right on there keep filling that in I've been doing this now for about five ten minutes This was my third attempt at getting a wax replica of my queen here. And as you can see, the, uh, the top didn't sink down in, or it did sink down in, but I kept filling it up with molten wax. So uh, I think that might have made a difference this time. It's been uh, cooling now for about half an hour, 45 minutes. 
or so. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and see if we can get this thing out of here now. And it's still got some porosity in it. Still got, still got something to uh, investigate here as to why we're uh, not get, getting the uh, full injection there. All right, this will have been my fourth attempt at pouring a uh, wax replica of my queen. Let's pour it out of here and see how this one looks. Oh, this one came out good. I'm gonna, I don't know if that's completely dried yet. It looks like it's... Come on out of there, baby. Yeah. All right, we got one. We got one. I'm missing the top there. I'll have to do another one here, but it's getting there. I got all the porosity out of it. And uh, I think the secret is in, in the temperature of the wax. This last time it was uh, 196 degrees. And this is something we can work with. So I got a queen. Okay, I successfully cast a replica of my wooden chest piece. Uh, into wax here It's missing the top, but I think that's going to be okay. What I'm going to do is uh, probably put a setting up there and install a, uh, a ruby or an emerald something like that uh, To give her a nice crown uh, I'm going to call this a success uh, That was my first time doing this ever and it was quite a chore uh, I learned a few things about the degassing, about the temperature of the wax when we inject. It's important that it's uh, at a certain temperature. I found 196 degrees was the correct temperature, and I got a good casting out of it. And uh, that's going to conclude this section of the video for my chest set. Thanks for watching. Good night.